Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, and I'm so excited to see you. We've got a really fun lesson for you today. And as I always mention, we are on Facebook and YouTube. And don't forget, you can come back and watch these. So if you're on Facebook, share it to your page and you'll be able to watch it really easy. And if you're on YouTube, you can come back and binge watch. Let's see, over 300 episodes. <laughs> All right, everyone, pop in, say hi. We will be answering your questions uh, in the comment section today. So let us know what's happening. And let's bring up Sarah. Sarah, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you today? Very good. So for those that don't know you, this is Sarah, brother, uh, educator. She's all over the place and she's got some super creative ideas going on. Sarah, I'm so excited you're here. And last time you were here, you did something so much fun with the print moda. I actually copied that one. So if you guys missed that episode, you have to go back. Uh, it was so cute. She took pictures of her family and put it on a great project. So great project. Like, what are you doing today? Well, we're, uh, we're kind of doing something similar today. Another super fun project with photos. I just love using the print moda to print out my family photos on fabric. So we're doing that. Plus it's Mother's Day and moms love photo gifts, right? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So today I wanted to make a sunglass sleeve, something to put your sunglasses in. And I dug out my favorite pair of glasses here today. Oh, those are cute. <laughs> um, I love the sunglass sleeve idea because it's good for, you know, if you're not someone who wants to make a gift or give a gift for Mother's Day, it's good for any occasion. Um, also, all ages, kids, People who are older, middle aged, everyone in between uses sunglasses, if not reading glasses. And so it's just a great gift for everyone, men, women, you name it. Um, so, and then of course, Mother's Day is around the corner. I wanted to make something that was a really fun photo gift to give to mom. I like to give Mother's Day gifts to my grandparents as well. And they all love family photo gifts. So that's what we're working on today. And That's what we're going to be do. very exciting. I think I better, I'm going to take a lot of notes because I leave my cheaters all over the place and then they get scratched. So I have a feeling that this cover might come in handy in my, in my area here. <laughs> yeah. And it's so easy to make. So you could just make a bunch of them, give them as gifts or leave one in every single room. That way you all <laughs> have <a> handy. <laughs> you know me well, Sarah, you know me well. Well, this is going to be fun. So everyone leave your comments and questions in the chat. We'll try to answer them as we go. And Sarah, I'll let you take it away. All right. So I wanted to spend a few minutes too talking about other gift ideas um, for Mother's Day or any holiday. The print moda, which is wrong side behind me right here, is a really cool inkjet ink fabric printer. For those of you who have not seen me do my spiel on it before, um, I have a lot of fun with it. I've done so many different creative projects. Most recently, I made a photo quilt. And who doesn't love a photo quilt. If you're a quilter, this is a really fun project to do with the print moda. So I printed out those photos. That's beautiful, that Sarah. Thank you. I love how this came out. It took a very long time. Quilts take forever. <laughs> <laughs> but it came out super cute. And this is an awesome gift idea, especially if you love to quilt. Um, the print moda prints on a roll of fabric. So I'll show you the tray here. Here's our lovely fabric roll. And it is, oops, I always tip the tray a bit too much. And it is 100% cotton. It is woven, non-stretched. So it's perfect for quilting, essentially. Hey, Sarah, while you're showing that, I just had somebody just recently email me and say, why are there two trays? in the print mode. And I said, because you can get rid of your printer because you can print paper in there as well. Oh, yes. I got rid of my other printer so fast. <laughs> because <laughs> the top tray here can be your dedicated paper tray. So I have my copy paper loaded in here. And I, I use it a lot, you guys, a lot. And it's a full color printer. So you can print on Brothers Awesome photo paper. They make glossy photo paper that prints beautifully. You can print on cardstock. I've done that a lot. I love printing on cardstock. You can print on regular plain paper. 
um, envelopes, lots of fun things, and all in full color plus printing on the fabric. So it's an all-in-one fun machine. You can get all your printing done if you have one of these. Right? It's great. Okay. So some other gift ideas, depending on how much time you want to put into a Mother's Day gift or any photo gift in general. Um, let's see. I would say quick project. I've always liked this card here. I printed out this little flower pattern and I just cut it out and I stitched around with like a little yellow accent color and made a little card. Put it on cardstock, easy peasy. It adds like this nice, um, what do I, it, it feels expensive when you put a little fabric on the front. It's not just paper, it's fancy. <laughs> And just imagine how much it would cost to buy one of those. Right. That's the coolest part. And you can just hit a button on your phone. It goes to the printer and you're done. Exactly. And I use Brothers Art Spirit app for that design. They have tons of free designs on the app for you. They've been releasing some new Mother's Day specific ones as well. And what I do is I usually print two at a time. So I'm not wasting any, um, any fabric, no materials. I'll print two cut both of them out and then I'll make two cards. I don't know. No one is sick at the moment, but <laughs> it happens. So we'll just store that away for a later date. <laughs> um, bookmarks are another really fun one. A great Mother's Day gift as well. So you can print a couple of photos on there and just, this is just two rectangles sewn together, super quick and easy. Uh, it makes a really beautiful personalized gift. Photo album cover, I printed this one out and stitched it together. And then you could fill this up with photos for mom, for grandma, for your aunt, for anyone. Another fun quilting project is this iPad sleeve. So we're doing eyeglass sleeve. <laughs> you could also do a little electronic sleeve. And I did a picture of a dog. Maybe your mom's favorite family member is your pet. <laughs> so you could always make her uh, a gift with a photo of your pet. I quilted right on top of this. And I love showing this project because it's really dense in color, right? So I printed this on white fabric. So it's really, really dense with the ink. And I wanted to put it to the test to see if the color would crack at all when I um, quilted over it and stitched through it. And you can see it did not crack, not one bit. The stitching came out so beautifully on this. And that's why I love using these for quilting projects and sewing projects. Also, because we're printing on a roll, it comes, the roll has five yards of fabric on it which means that you can print up to three yards continuously. So I always love to show my birthday banner here. I printed this whole banner. Uh, that's awesome. Right? So, so I'm yeah. just thinking of something. That's so cute. And, and, you know, sometimes you have banners. You're like, what am I going to do with that now? Oh my gosh, everything you just showed, you could cut that up and turn it into a quilt or anything else like that because it's great fabric. Totally, yeah. Um, a Mother's Day banner would be so beautiful if you threw some flowers on there and then that would also make great fabric, like floral fabric to sew a really fun project with. That is a great point. I also have this nice big kind of wall art. This is one of the frame projects or templates rather that's in the art spirit app and so all you have to do is go into the app look at the templates pick one that you like you drop your own photo in here print it out and you're done so if we're talking about quick projects this is a really nice quick one cut it out frame it mom can hang it on the wall put it on make a door banner whatever you want that's cute that's a great idea have you made any new projects with the print moda recently or seen well, any? I've been making fabric and piecing it together. So I've been taking photos and somebody asked during, I think it was maybe during one of your shows and I didn't even see the question until later. They said, can I print 
for my computer? Do I only, can I only print from my phone? No, you can print from the computer. So I was playing around with one of my software programs because I was piecing things together for another project. And I thought, I'm just going to test this. And I hit print. It printed gorgeous. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, between Art Spira and everything else you could do, there's so much. But actually, I'm thinking of doing a banner like what you just did for my yeah. mom and then using the fabric as a quilt backing. Love that. That's a really great idea. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Art Spira, I'll give everyone a little preview of the app here. This is free to download uh, for Apple or Android users. And let me make that a little bit smaller so you guys can see it. But in here, you will find a project magazine. So every week, a magazine comes out with um, all these different projects that you can sew and embroider and different cutting projects as well because the app works with the scan and cut, the print moda, it works with any wirelessly enabled embroidery machines. I have my NS2850D here and it works, what else am I missing? The sublimation printer. Um, am I missing anything else? <laughs> no, I think you got it all. That is that's a lot. And I'm putting it right up here. Download the Brother Art Spira. A lot of people don't say, I don't know how to spell it. And it's, yeah. it is free to download. There's a free version and a paid version. But it also allows you to add six devices. So you're like everything she said, it all fits in there. But if you have more than six, well, you probably don't. But if you do, <laughs> you have to take them out. And it's really fast to take them out and put them back in. But put your six favorites. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would definitely max out the machine list, but <laughs> like you said, it's very easy. You delete one, you reconnect later on if you have to, but is what it is. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna focus on. Let's see, what do I want to focus on today? So we're so we're focusing on the print mode. So I'll focus on the printing designs here. So at the top of the screen, you have different categories. So printing designs is one of those categories, and these are the templates that I mentioned before. So you can go in here and let's see. Let's choose um, not photo uh, frame. That's what I wanted. So in the frame category, you can swipe through all these different projects. Here's the one that I was showing you. It shows you an image of the final product project. It gives you the dimensions so you know how big it's going to be. Once you press create, it takes you into the editing page. You can tap like I was telling you guys. Press change. It pulls photos directly from the device that you're using. Swap out your own photo in there. You can even adjust the photo if you need to. Try not to crop anyone out. <laughs> you can rotate it, resize it. You can add filters. You can change the colors of the frame. Lots of fun editing stuff on here and so quick and easy. So you print this, you have a project done. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> so simple, Sarah, so simple. So easy. So for our uh, sunglass, leave today. I drafted a really quick pattern, very simple. I it's it's a square, <laughs> 7 inches by 7 inches, and then I just rounded the corners at the bottom, and I like it when um it's a little bit slanted on one side. So don't judge me. This is my test project. Okay, I just used scrap fabric. <laughs> We're going to make a beautiful one today. But this was my tester. So you can see how there's this nice opening here to put the sunglasses in. Just like that. So the sunglasses peek out. They're easier to pull out of the sleeve. Anyway, so that's why I did this slanted part right here. So this is all you need. You just need this one piece. And what I did was I cut a piece for the lining. I used a silk and I did floral because Mother's Day, we all think of flowers for Mother's Day, right? And my mom in particular loves flowers. So this is not going to scratch my glasses at all. It's very, very soft. That is what you want to prioritize for your lining fabric. And then I also cut one piece of batting, just cotton quilting, batting, anything you have laying around. And then I went ahead and I edited two family photos together. That way I could get 
one photo on the back side of the sleeve and then one on the front. I wanted to really maximize the sunglass sleeve there. So I just used a web service to edit the two photos together. You can also do it in the app. So I'll show you guys how you can edit in the app as well. If you go down to the bottom of the screen and pr uh, press new with the plus sign and go to printing, you can jump right into the design editor and then you choose the size that you wanna edit with. Since this is seven by seven, we'll just choose the letter size. And now I can press the blue plus sign down at the bottom and I can add photos. Again, pulling directly from my camera roll on my phone. And so I can choose one photo. I pulled out an oldie of my mom and I when I was a little chubster. And <laughs> <laughs> I just took a photo of it with my phone. If you have a scanner, of course, you could scan that image in. As long as you can get it over to your mobile device or your computer, because like Angela mentioned, you can print directly from your computer to paper or to the fabric roll from the printer. So get that photo of the photo somehow, um, or use a photo that's already on your phone. So I combined the two. So that old one of my mom and I is a printed photo that I have. I just took a picture of my phone and I had it on my phone that way. And then this is a newer one that my mom, my brother and I took together. So that was already on my mobile device. So you see how I just drop them in? I'm not, I'm just, while I'm talking to you, I'm just editing. That's how easy it is. You drop it in and then you just use your fingers to pinch and zoom to make it bigger or smaller line them right up next to each other. And now you have two pictures side by side. That way, when you cut out the pattern, you'll have one picture in the front of the sleeve. We're gonna fold it in half, and then you'll have one photo on the back, and you have photos all around. So if you're happy with how you edited, all you'd have to do now is press done. You have the option to save it. You don't have to. My printer is selected at the bottom. It shows me how big this print is, eight and a half inches. Now I just have to press print and it'll send it to my printer. I am going to pull in the template I made with an editing software. It looks very, very similar. It's just a little bit more precise. So I'm just going back into my design editor, pressing letter going to add, camera roll, and then I have this one already set up. You see how the two photos are side by side? I use that editing software on the web just to put them next to each other, get the spacing nice and perfect. It's tough being a perfectionist, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're doing crafts because there's always one thing that could go off, but you know what? It looks great no matter what you do called it's design a, element. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I know that I want it to be, um, I think I said seven inches, but I think it's more like seven and a half tall. Yeah, it's seven and a half tall. So to make sure that I have this size correctly, I'm just going to go to the size tool at the bottom of the screen there. And it's 7.55 inches. I'm good with that. <laughs> And you can just press the plus or minus symbol uh, for the height or the width to resize that image and get it perfect. If you really are a perfectionist and you want it at perfect 7.5, you could just knock it down to 7.5. All right, was that clear? Did I, should I elaborate on anything else? What do you think? I don't know, I thought it was pretty darn clear and I'm very excited to try this. I never thought of putting two photos next to each other for the fold of the glasses. This is a great idea, Sarah. Thank you, thank you. I didn't want anyone's face like wrapping around the corner, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's send this over to the printer. I'm not going to save it. I have my printer connected. It's very, very easy to connect your printer to the Artsphere app once you have the printer. You plug it in, it turns on by itself. You don't even have to press the power button. Um, I got a little spoiled with that feature. I tried out a new machine recently. I plugged it in and I just stared at it waiting for it to turn on, but you had to press the power button. Most machines you have to power on, but this one just goes on on its own. 
So um, it goes on, you connect it to your wireless network, the same one that your phone is connected to, and then you just go to your machine settings and it pops right up, you add the printer, you're ready to print. So it's really, really easy to set the whole thing up. The fabric goes into the tray really easily too. So here's the roll again. And I don't think I mentioned, but it is pre-treated fabric. So once we print, all we're gonna have to do is let it dry for 15 minutes. We don't have to treat it before or afterwards. It's ready to go. Once it dries for 15 minutes, we can remove this lovely backing that comes on here and we're ready to sew our quilts or craft, whatever you wanna do with it. <laughs> This backing prevents the fabric from bubbling and from you getting any little mess ups in your print. It keeps it nice and smooth as it goes through the printer. So all you have to do is put it fabric side down, roll it into the tray, see it rolling up, up, up. And in the back there, there are a couple of notches that will just pull it and feed it into the printer when you're ready to print. And that's it. We're just gonna set it back in. The screen is asking me, is that the fabric roll? And I'm going to say yes. And now I'm going to send my print over. And let's listen to it because it's really, really quiet when it prints, which I love. There's also a built-in trimmer. So it's going to, you're going to hear a couple of clicks and it's going to trim my fabric right off the roll for me. So I don't have to pull out the roll and cut it or anything crazy like that. It trims it perfectly to length. So we're gonna press print. It's going to say, make sure you have eight and a half inches on your roll. That's how much I need to print my project. And I know I do, as you guys saw, I have a pretty full roll in there. So I'm gonna press okay. There it goes. That's so easy to do, Sarah. And, you know, a lot of people have said, well, how big is the roll? Well, it, you know, I still have the same first roll and I've printed so many things. Of course, they're all been a little bit smaller, like letter size, because yeah. I've been piecing them together to use like kind of as a quilt. Well, my version of a mini quilt. <laughs> but yeah, it really lasts a while. And I love that cut feature because you don't waste anything. Totally. Yeah. It's five yards on a roll. So it's really significant. Plus, the, a full set of ink will print 35 yards of fabric. It prints seven rolls. So a lot of people ask me, wow. you know, how long does the, link, the ink last and how often I, am I going to have to replace it? And it really lasts a long time. So it's great. Well, you know, it's funny you say about the ink because uh, it has the individual ink cartridges with different colors. And that's my favorite kind for a printer when you're trying to print color instead of just one of the big one, the big cartridges that has all the colors together, because in the old days, I used to run out of that. <laughs> so the coloring is so great. I didn't realize it printed that much, though. I haven't had any issues. So and I've had it almost about a year now. So and I use it all the time. And you know, it actually cleans itself by itself. Like one day I was in here and I'm like, what is that noise? <laughs> it must have had an update or something that it just did. I love it. It just knows. <laughs> I know as long as you leave it plugged in it'll keep cleaning itself and that prevents any ink from drying up in the ink tubes which I know a lot of people have experienced with other printers then you have to clean it out it takes a long time and it wastes ink so this way the printer is always staying clean and not wasting any ink absolutely all right so the print is done super quick and here it is oh cute <laughs> really cute. So now, like I said, we just have to let this dry for 15 minutes. But I have one that already dried. And this is the part of the show where I feel like this is a cooking show. <laughs> and they're like, have to let the dough rest for 30 minutes. And they pull out one that's been resting for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's really glad you, you'd be very happy this isn't a cooking show if I'm on because there would be, we'd be here a long time and there'd be very few viewers. So, <laughs> oh gosh. all right. So this one has been drying all morning. So it's nice and dry. And I'm going to switch over to my table view here and we're going to cut this out. So the first thing we need to do 
is to just remove this plastic backing. So it's really easy to peel it off. You just get one of the corners going here. And peel away. You don't have to worry about the fabric stretching or warping or anything like that. See, it's beautiful. It's ready to go. It has a really nice hand feel to it. And there's no sticky residue. The first, my first reaction to seeing that there was a backing was I was thinking once you pulled it off, there would be like stickiness back here, but there's nothing. So it's a really great backing material that they have on there. Okay. So now I'm just going to lay my template down on top and you can cut it with a rotary blade. You can pin it. I don't like to pin through cardstock. So what I'm actually going to do is just, I'm just going to trace it with a water soluble pen. This way I can also check the placement before I cut of everyone's faces and how the photo looks and all that. Beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see my marker super well, but this, uh, the placement looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to cut off anyone's face. What I'm most worried about. So now I'm going to cut it. Now I chose to do kind of a quilted sleeve because I felt like I always like to have a little bit of padding on things that require a sleeve or a case or anything. Just so if you bump it or squish it in your bag, you have an extra layer of protection there. So that's why I decided to add the batting. Um, it's like a, wrapping your eyeglasses in a little blanket. <laughs> Oh, you placed that curve perfectly. Yeah. So I'm going to make my sandwich now. I'm going to put my batting behind these lovely faces here. And how did I do? I don't even remember how what order I did this in. <laughs> um, OK. This is my lining. I remember what I did now. So what I ended up doing to make, to avoid having to do binding on the edge, what I'm gonna do is sew around here and then we're just gonna flip it inside out and then we're gonna quilt it. So where are my clips here? Do you have a, do you have a preference of where you're gonna leave an opening to turn it? Yeah, so I I want to leave the opening to turn it inside out like right on this straight part here because it's much easier um, to flip and get the, the closure nice and even versus doing it on a curve. So definitely I would recommend leaving the opening on a straight portion, whether it's on this side or this side. Good idea. Yeah. I'm always aiming to make my life easier with these sewing projects. I don't want to be stressed out. Okay, so I'm clipping around. And I'm going to be sewing on the NS 2850D. It is a combo sewing embroidery machine. It's wirelessly enabled. It's got Disney designs on there. 
I love that machine. I, I keep it out in my studio and I, I sew with it all the time. All right, let's take it over. I'm also using a cotton thread because it has a little more body to it than the polyester thread. And I just prefer to sew with cotton thread. Just a personal preference. So I'm going to start right at the end. So this is going to be my opening here. I'm going to start here, go all the way around and stop here, leaving this straight portion open. And I'm using um, a straight stitch with the needle in the center. I'm using my J foot and the length and the width are set to the standard setting. So it's two and a half millimeters length and three and a half millimeters in width. And I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam so that I don't have to do any trimming after I sew. I'm also going to start off with a reinforced stitch. That makes a little knot. So when I'm turning this inside out, the stitches don't pull out. I have my foot pedal attached and I'm sewing with that, but there is a start stop button feature and you can adjust the speed and just sew with your start stop button. I do that sometimes as well. I'm really holding this silk in place because it just wants to move around as I'm sewing. If you're a real beginner, I would recommend starting with maybe not silk. I would do, what other soft fabrics would you do as the lining? Oh, um, I just bought a bunch of these. Uh, they're like little towels that you wipe your glasses with. Um, oh gosh, but they come in a size that would be perfect for that. I can't think of what they're called. <laughs> now I'll think of it at about three in the morning, Sarah. That's how it's going to happen. But they're really soft. I use them for cleaning, but that would be a great lining. Yeah. It would almost be like cleaning your glasses every time you put it in there. Right, right. Are they microfiber? Ma there you go. Microfiber. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like how many letters? <laughs> no, that would be perfect. All right, I'm reinforcing again at the end, and then I'm using the scissors button on my machine to trim my thread. There we go. You know, I thought I was doing a quarter inch. It's a little bit more than a quarter. So I love I, that fabric. Yeah, it's pretty, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the wrong side. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's really, really vibrant. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just clip the curves. That releases the tension a little bit, and it will allow it to lay nice and flat when we flip it right side out. Just try not to cut your stitches, because I speak from experience. I've done it. <laughs> Okay. 
And I am going to trim this down because um, it's a little bit wider than a quarter inch. I want it to be closer to a quarter inch so that there's less bulkiness when we flip it right side out. So I'm going to trim, trim. I'm not going to trim where this opening is uh, because I want there to be enough fabric for me to be able to turn it to finish that opening off, to close it. And then I didn't verbalize it, but I cut the corner here on a diagonal again, just so that there's less bulk in that corner and it'll be, uh, it'll turn nicer now. Okay, so let's flip her. Again, I'm gonna just really poke out that, that corner as much as I can. Hey, Sarah, for somebody who's watching that maybe hasn't done the sewing where they flip it right side out, with that batting and those two layers, about how wide of a opening did you leave? Yeah, let me measure it for you. I'll give you an exact number. I think it's about three inches, I want to say. No, it's less. Hold on. It doesn't look very big, but, you know, also remember if you're making this, you have to get your fingers in there. So <laughs> yeah. if you have a hard time maneuvering your fingers, leave a bigger opening. <laughs> yeah. It's about two and a half inches. Okay, great. Thank you. Of course. All right, so I have my iron on. So I cut off mom's head just a tiny bit, but you can still see her face. So I don't think she'll be mad. My face is cut off a little in the corner here. So next time I would, I would probably just leave a little extra for seam allowance around the edges. And over here with my iron, I'm just going to tuck the raw edges of our opening in like that so that it's nice and flat. And again, this is why I would choose the straight edge because it's easy to see if you're getting a nice straight edge. It's a little bit more tricky on the curve. So tucking, the silk is making my life difficult. And I'm just gonna press it. I'm also going to clip it in place just as another, another protection from it kind of unraveling. All right, so now it's going to stay put. I'm going to press this whole thing so those seams lay nice and flat. It definitely starts to look a little puffy at this stage because we have the batting in there. But next thing we're gonna do is do a couple of quilting stitches and that kind of flattens it out a little bit more. Okay, it's looking good. So for the quilting, you can just use your presser foot to kind of line up different lines of quilting going across. I opted um, on the test one to just do diagonal. I thought that if I did um, two directionals that it would be a little bit too busy. We wanna not, I don't wanna take focus away from the photo on the eyeglass sleeve. So I'm just gonna do diagonals in one direction. And I'm gonna start out here, going straight into the bottom corner with a diagonal line. And then branching off of that line, I'm just gonna make more of them an inch apart. 
On my sample, I did them a little bit closer, but for the sake of time today, I don't want you guys to have to watch me stitch <laughs> a bunch of straight lines. So I'm just gonna do them an inch apart for right now. But of course you use your judgment and do as many quilting lines as you'd like. I love my water soluble marker. I use it for absolutely everything. Just really pleases my, my visual brain to be able to draw on absolutely everything I do and then it just walks away. Hey, Sarah, have you ever tried the air erasable pen? I have, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's great, but it disappears in 24 hours. I learned that the really hard way years ago when I did alterations for people. And I marked this beautiful dress, the whole hem. And guess what? It disappeared. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so I like the water erasable better because I know it's there until I get rid of it. Exactly. It's there until you tell it to leave. <laughs> <laughs> So back in the machine, I'm going to stitch this closed and then I am going to stitch along all the lines that I just drew to make my quilting. So I'm leaving the standard uh, settings for closing the side seam right here. reinforcing All right now that is nice and closed up and now i'm going to make my stitch length a little bit longer for the quilting again i don't want the stitches to be um too dense so that they were kind of distracting from the photos. And I went with a white uh, thread because we have a lot of color going on in the lining and in all the different photos. So I didn't, I don't know. I didn't want to pick like a bright pink. Again, I thought it would just be a lot. It's already kind of a lot. <laughs> okay, so I'm going into my settings and I'm just going to adjust the length. Let's try a four millimeter link. And I'm just lining up. There is a nice little notch on my presser foot that marks the center there. Can you guys see that? So that's what I'm lining up with my markings. So I'm just stitching straight down the center. And I'm just reinforcing at the start and the end of each line. Just so that it doesn't come undone. I love the scissor key on this machine and any of my machine that has it. I'm so spoiled with it. I never have to pull my project out and trim the threads. Thank you. 
This is really a fun, easy project. Uh, as a reminder, all of you that are watching, leave your comments. We are live in the Q&A comment section today on YouTube and Facebook. So we'll answer where we can. Uh, but I love this project. This is going to, this would be so much fun for, I can think of so many different ideas for this. Sunglasses for the boat. I think I'm going to take a picture of the boat for this one. The, yeah. I'll give it to the guys. They're going to love that. That's a great idea. But my mom's probably watching and she's expecting one of these for Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, there's so many different variations you could do with the quilting. You can make it without quilting. Um, if you're good at free motion, I feel like this is a great opportunity to do some free motion quilting. Just get creative with it. It's a nice little canvas for whatever personalization you want to do. All right, I'm going to trim all these threads and then I'm going to show you guys the very last step. I definitely like how this is coming out though. This might be one of the things I give for my mom this year. Okay. Trimmed all my little threads. Oh, see a couple more. Okay. Now the very last step is to just fold this over. Just like that. And I'm going to stitch from kind of the start of the curve here all the way down. I'm going to try and run right along where I close that opening on the side too so that you don't see two lines of stitching. It'll just look like one. And around the curve, and then I'm going to stop right in the bottom corner here. So it's just this quick stitch right around. And that will close up the case and we'll be all done, just like that. I'm going to switch back to my standard settings here. So the stitch length is going to be two and a half millimeters. Starting right in that corner. And I'm stitching right on the edge. So I'm going to do a reinforced stitch. Actually, I don't like that position. Let me stitch it over. You know that, that flower coming out looks beautiful with that photo. It does look good, right? I was a little worried the fabric was a little too crazy, but I like the pop of color. I'm just going to clip this in place because, again, that, that silk is sliding around. Okay. 
starting with my reinforced stitch. There's a lot of layers to get through, so I just go nice and slow on this part. This part. And then once I reach that side fold, I'm going to do another reinforced stitch and trim. Okay. Just going to cut my little loose threads. Now I'm going to give this a quick wash to remove all the markings before I gift it. And the fabric does wash really nicely. My that was going to be my next question because a lot of people have asked, does it wash well? Does it fade quickly? I haven't washed. I think I've washed a few of my pieces, but not a lot. Yeah, so this, um, this quilt that I did... I washed it a bunch of times, so it really, still, yeah, it still looks really nice. And the photos that I used have like a faded effect to them. That's how they were edited. So if you feel like it looks a little faded, that's how the photos were to start with. I really haven't noticed a lot of fading after washing, but yeah, I put this through the works, ironing, steaming over and over again um, and washing it. So yeah. Super, super cute. Yeah. Um, I would just so let Go ahead. I got to see the glass case. I got to see the finish. This is so cute. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that lining you chose. Chubbs. That's me. <laughs> I, yeah. idea. I like the photo on the back. I like how it's just a nice, again, I probably would have not cut my face off, but <laughs> I'll have to play with the positioning on that. But so you, yeah. can, you can add a little applique or put yourself in the corner. Or <laughs> I always yeah. do that now that we have this opportunity. I'm the oldest of five kids and I'll, I'll Photoshop my brothers and sisters. So we have one big photo. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. But yeah, and you could, of course, adjust it. Obviously, these glasses are pretty wide. Um, so if you have, this is my other pair that I brought out. Oh, those are fun. <laughs> I love fun glasses. So if you have really big ones, um, these fit a lot, a lot nicer in this size. You can just adjust the pattern, just add half an inch or whatever you think. Um, yeah, it's really easy. You know, it just starts with a rectangle. I love projects that are just a rectangle, essentially. <laughs> That's really fun. So that reminds me, I was just thinking, um, it reminds me of one that I did with a serger, very similar to that. But if somebody didn't want to go through the effort of turning it right side out, they could just do this all in the hoop and just add a nice binding around it. I mean, there's so many options with this. A simple pattern, but a ton of ideas on this yeah. one. Yes. Bindings can be really nice. I just opted out for a binding for this project. Oh, I love This is so simple. And then you don't have to worry about finding extra fabric for the binding. You don't cover up any of the photos. I mean, this is really a fun idea. A fun idea. You can even make your own fabric with one of the photos and use it as a binding. I have. Oh, yeah. That's a fun idea. Like this is from a photo. You can see the little boy far away. It looks like a nice, cool pattern. And then you see the photograph. Oh, look at how cute that is. So if you did something like that and used it as the binding or the lining or both, it would be a really nice little pattern. And then you say, but look closer. And then they'll realize that <laughs> it's the photo. Oh, great project. Great project. So leave your comments below. I hope you're going to do this project. And don't forget to use hashtag brother sews, hashtag brother scan and cut. 
I, yeah, you could cut the fabric with the scan and cut. I'm thinking save the pattern and then just over and over. That would work. Definitely. <laughs> Sarah, this is a great project. So as you all can see, scrolling below, we've got the Brother website. They have two blogs. Don't forget, a crafting and a sewing. And then I have Sarah's website there. You have my website. If you go to AngelaWolf.com and click on classes and events, click there's a little pink box. It will show you all the live events coming up. And then you can search by name. So if you want to go back and watch Sarah's episodes, although I just started this January 1, 2024, <laughs> we have hundreds of episodes that could be in there, but you can go back and binge watch this. Sarah, this has been just a great lesson. Thank you so much. And again, leave your comments and questions because we'll be monitoring that even if you're not watching the live show and you're on the replay. Yes. And I hope everyone has a happy Mother's Day. Sounds good. Until next time, happy